the goal is ghost protocol. Now when it comes to the internet, there is projected to be 18 billion devices by 2024. This is insane and browsing your search engine, your browser is at the heartbeat of what you do on the internet, both mobile and on your computer. We're gonna break down the browsers you should use on both Operation Ghost Protocol. The fact that people are spying on you, intelligence agencies and really anybody, hackers, anybody who can get your information or your data, really not a shock to anybody but a lot of people have just given up, given in. Privacy is a right, and it's a right you need to fight for and protect if you want to keep and not end up like one of these countries who has social credit scores and who dictates everything you do in life. Now, your browser stores a lot of information about you, and there's a handful of browsers you could and potentially should use. Now, for a lot of people, the first choice is Tor, and I highly recommend Tor. I recommend all of you check out Tor and see if it's the right browser for you. I use Tor for all kinds of things, whether it is on my phone or it's on one of my computers. Tor is a phenomenal project and it is the best option for the average person. Now, it was of course invented for people, uh, journalists and people in other countries, people who could have serious legal or physical consequences if caught. Uh, talking about or discussing certain topics or subjects online, pushing certain information, or even researching certain things. Now, is Tor the right browser for the average person? Well, that depends on what the average person wants to do. For most people, I would say yes. Now, if you're on Android, you can get the Tor browser. If you're on iOS, you can get the Onion browser, which I did a full video about this and you can check that out and decide if it's a browser you want to use. It is a little bit slower, but it is much more secure than any other browser out there. So what's a good option if you don't want to use Tor? Some people see that as an extreme step. I would disagree. I think it's a standard step, but if it's an, if it's an extreme step, what is a good option outside of Tor? Well, Brave. Brave is a great browser that has gotten a lot of popularity and for out of the box, Brave would probably be the browser that I recommend. It boasts a lot of great features. You could use it on or off your phone. I use it on both and I highly recommend the Brave browser. You should check it out and right out the box, the features are phenomenal and it allows you some other security features and some other things you can do inside of the Brave browser to secure your experience, whether it's ads or prying eyes on your data, metadata, information, search history, and so many other things that you're going to potentially do. The next one we wanna talk about is Firefox. Now Firefox has been around forever. It is one of the oldest browsers on this list, and it is a browser that's had a nice solid market share for decades now. However, Firefox has had some issues recently. They've been in the public forum. People have been, uh, the CEO has made some statements that some people are not happy with. Personally, I don't use Firefox itself much on my computers, but I do use Firefox on some of my phones. I have a phone system, which I've talked about. And so I use different phones, different platforms for different things. I do use Firefox, but I use Firefox Focus, which I think is a great browser option for your smartphone. On my iOS phone, I do use Firefox Focus, and for a good all-around browser as an alternative to things like Safari, and certainly browsers that I would never recommend, like Google Chrome, this is a great option, and Firefox has just been around forever. They've got a good, clean user experience and second to maybe brave i would recommend firefox and or firefox focus now when you look at options on my phone i use the onion browser firefox focus and i also use duckduckgo i love duckduckgo you can actually download the duckduckgo app and i use that directly now for search engine duckduckgo in my opinion is the best option for a dedicated search engine it gives you the features you need and it gets rid of your search history and your data you don't need these big companies building huge profiles on you for marketing reasons or convenience reasons or alleged security reasons if you're an adult you can take care of yourself you know what to do and 
these companies try to create these nanny states for no reason and it's unnecessary. Now Google of course is the worst offender but really most of them are pretty bad offenders. There's a lot of search engines out there that are lesser known and uh, I wouldn't recommend most of them. I would recommend DuckDuckGo for most people. It's very convenient. It's very user friendly. It's just as user friendly as Google but it's just a better option for your search. Not that Google is a bad company or a bad uh, you know, option for the general person, but you've got to take privacy into account. I use Google. YouTube is a Google product. Gmail is a Google product. Now, I don't use Gmail on a regular basis, and YouTube I log into from a browser, just like most other of these social apps, because they track you probably the most severely, especially companies like Facebook, which I do not use at all. But if you look at the browser options, the Onion browser is a great option for you if you are using your phone. And then my main browser typically is Tor. Now on my dedicated uh, computer, my iMac Pro in my office, I do use Safari. I've really ramped up the security settings, but I will use Safari on a wired connected computer. Quite frankly, you're not going to be ghost at your business office on a wired iMac Pro. So I use the actual Ethernet to wire it in and it's better than Wi-Fi. It's a better option than Wi-Fi for security and speed. And I do a lot of video work and other dedicated work on that machine. And I will use Safari for ease of use, but I don't log into anything. I don't store passwords and I've really uh, ramped down on all of the all of the security features that they allow. Now, outside of that, I do not recommend personally, you know, Chrome, I don't recommend the browser, but some Google features people are just gonna use. It's the biggest company on the internet, it's the biggest website on the internet, it's the biggest, one of the biggest companies in the world. But you really just gotta be careful and compartmentalize. The best browser strategy, in my opinion, is multiple browsers. Even if Google Chrome is part of your workflow, which I know for a lot of people it is, Make sure you use that for things that aren't as personal. Maybe don't use your bank information on Google. Maybe use something like Brave or maybe use you know uh, a different browser. Probably also don't use Tor because Tor might get you uh, blocked and suspended on a bank style, a finance style account as well. So keep that in mind. But have a browser system. So my main browser system is Safari for kind of throwaway stuff. Tor is kind of my main secure browser. Brave is something I use a lot. Onion is something I use on iOS. And Firefox Focus I use on iOS or you know you can use pretty much anywhere. And I will use Firefox uh, to pop up things as well. Personally, I don't use Google Chrome at all. But if you do, just have a browser strategy. And so for me, that is the system I like to use. And the reason I like to use that is it compartmentalizes things. And it makes sure that not one singular, it's kind of like diversifying your assets. So it wouldn't be very smart to have your whole portfolio in one stock because that stock goes down, your entire livelihood could go down. So people might diversify and have 15 stocks or 12 stocks or 47 stocks. Similar concept here when it comes to your browser, I don't think having just one specific browser. It is weird to think about, but when I was a kid, Internet Explorer was the king of browsers. And Opera has always had a uh, uh, market share. It's never been massive, but they've always had a market share. You see things like Microsoft products. They had Internet Explorer. They moved to Edge. All products I don't recommend. Personally, I'm not a fan of Epic. I've been asked before about Epic. Not a fan. There's a lot of browsers out there. There's a lot of experiences out there. But find a system. And, and quite frankly, even the browser Tor, as much as I like Tor, using a browser system is still the best strategy, period. Having you know, two to four browsers for most people is the best option, in my opinion. But again, this is just my opinion. This is just what I do. What do you do? What browser do you use? Do you think Tor is the best? Or do you have a browser that you recommend? Are you a Chrome user? Or, uh, what do you think the best browser is? Are you one of those people who just use one browser? I know there's a lot of people, I talk to people all the time, that are just, they're stuck on one browser. That's all they use on their phone, on their computer. Everything they do is that one browser, one email account. Everything is just one and done. I get it for convenience, but it's really a bad idea for privacy and for the ability to be hacked. I mean, forget, you know, Big Brother and, and these companies stealing your data and using it against you. If you're hacked or somebody gets access to your account, they could really do some harm to your life if this happens. And identity theft is up like 300% year over year and climbing. And uh, it's not 
if you'll be attacked for identity theft. It's pretty much win at this point, which is sad but true with all this information out there. And so diversifying should be a key factor for all of you, in my opinion. But again, this is just my opinion. This is just what I do. Let me know what you do down below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Putting out new videos every day on privacy, security, how to build a digital life, a nomadic life, you know, work for yourself, if you've got your own business, and be able to create your own three-foot world, be able to work for your own business, your own company, be able to do it privately, securely, discreetly, and live a lifestyle that you create. Don't plug into the big system. That's my motto. That's what I've been doing for many years. You do what you want to do, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.